Okay, everyone, are you ready? This is a big one. I know a lot of people have been waiting for me to get around to this game on the list. It is a true legend on the console, and it's in all those top 10 videos that get all the views that I refuse to do because I hate success. That's right, I can only be talking about the one, the only, Bassmasters Classic. Now, not the follow-up Bassmasters Classic Pro Edition. That will be coming in about 100 episodes or so. This review is for the original Bassmasters Classic, released for the Genesis in July of 1995, exclusively in the United States by Black Pearl Software. Now, okay, clearly I'm taking the piss here as I'm honestly not sure if anyone has cared to review this game this century, but once upon a time, this was a game that was sold in stores and for a retail suggested price of $65. Yeah, you heard me right. This was not a budget title when it was originally released. It was originally sold for full retail markup at a dollar value that when adjusted for inflation would equal about $132. Now just think about that for a second. Would you rather have Bass Masters Classic on launch day or the WWE 2K24 40 Years of WrestleMania edition with enough left over for a drink or two at Starbucks? Now, a tough choice, I know. That's some pretty good coffee. However, I should probably pause for a second because I'm sure there's some of you out there that don't know me and just got randomly dropped here by the algorithm due to searching for some of those classic fishing bloopers on YouTube because I'm pretty sure that people getting hurt is the only way to make fishing interesting. Hi, my name is Dave, and welcome to Zalagamoto, the channel where I'm out to collect and review not just video games that somehow managed to have a sequel released when no one cared about the first game, but also the nearly 1,280 other titles released in the English language for the Sega Master System, Genesis slash Mega Drive, Sega or Mega CD as the case may be, and finally the 32X. Basically, if I can plug it into a Genesis, either by itself or with some sort of add-on, and then be able to what, read what's on the screen, I'm trying to get a copy of it and review it for posterity, with both looks at that original packaging and the gameplay captured from original hardware whenever possible. Now, I've been goofing about so far, and I want to make it clear that if you're a fisherman or if you like fishing, that's totally cool. And I'm not trying to you know, be insulting or anything like that. I really don't mind fishing mini games when they come up in games like uh, Yakuza 0 or Far Cry 5. And clearly, there is a market for fishing video games out there. Because otherwise, something like Sega Bass Fishing wouldn't exist which was so popular that the Dreamcast port got a special controller just to play it. However, I would be lying if I said that so far my experience with fishing titles on the Genesis was enjoyable. Believe it or not, Bassmasters Classic actually had a competing series on the Genesis around that same time with the TNN Bass series. And previously, I've reviewed both of those games on the channel, back in episodes 31 and 129 if you're curious. Just to sum up those in the meantime, while I don't specifically hate the first TNM Bass game, even though it was clearly a budget title, the second game was an abomination that was somehow not only worse than that original game, but was also just flat out broken, with a fishing mechanic that might have made sense in theory, but just did not work when it came time to play the game. So the question is, can Black Pearl Software succeed where others have failed in creating a good fishing game for the Genesis? Well, seeing as how Black Pearl was also responsible for the Genesis port of Time Killers, I don't exactly have high hopes, but who knows? I mean, stranger things have happened. Before we get into all that, though, let's take a look at this fairly late release package for the Genesis. And this is my copy of Bass Masters Classic for the Genesis. You'll immediately notice that this is a cardboard box release, which was pretty normal for Genesis titles at the time, specifically mid-1995. This copy is in pretty good shape considering all of the structural integrity of the outside of the box is intact, and the print looks good as well, with no sun bleaching or water damage. As you might imagine, this isn't exactly a game that's in high demand, so if for some reason I ever needed to replace it with another copy, it would only cost about $10 or so. But I'm totally fine with this one, as the only thing that's really wrong with it is that one of the inner flaps that's supposed to hold the cartridge in place is torn which unfortunately isn't too surprising with these boxes as they're just super fragile and not really made for kids to take the cartridges out and put them back in more than a few times. And even as an adult, those cartridge trays can just get damaged so easily. As far as the cover art goes, 
I don't think this is bad at all, and it's actually some pretty nice artwork, with of course a bass front and center, while an angler is trying to reel it in in the background. I think probably my only complaint is that the title logo is pretty large and takes up at least a third of the cover. Now that's probably nitpicking a bit, but on these red box releases, you are already giving up some space for that bar on the side, so things were already going to be a bit cramped before the logo was laid out. We'll get to the manual more in a minute, but if you take a look, the logo there appears to be sized much more appropriately for the space, and it looks so much better. I'm not sure why the cover didn't have this same proportion to the artwork. Uh, maybe they thought the logo would need to be bigger to help sell the game on the shelves. But I think this is a self-inflicted wound, as clearly they had what worked and they just didn't use it. Quickly, I mentioned that this was a North American exclusive release, so there's no other region versions to compare the artwork to, but this wasn't a console exclusive, and there was also a Super Nintendo version of the game, which released in roughly the same time in mid-1995. That version of the game isn't that interesting, as it uses similar art, but what is interesting is that somehow there was a Japanese version of it released, which uses significantly different art. And I think North America won this particular competition, as I'm just not real sure what they were going for there. Flipping over the back, and there's four fairly hard to make out screenshots from the game over to the side, all with wood borders. And again, don't really know what they were going for there either, but for 1995 especially, these are some of the worst screenshots that I've seen. I'm pretty certain even the ones used for Earth Defense that I looked at last week were better, and that was only a quasi-legal release. The flavor text is fine, I guess, but it's also just word for word the game introduction that's in the manual, and I think they probably could have done better with some bullet points about the game's actual features or something. As far as the manual goes, it's not bad. It unfortunately starts out with a dedication to Brian Kirchall, who had won the Bassmaster Classic the year before 1994 at the young age of 23. But unfortunately, he didn't get to defend his championship due to dying in the flagship airline's flight 3379 crash on December 13, 1994. The dedication is a nice touch, and apparently during the 1995 version of the event, the trophy was driven around the lake in a boat in his honor. The rest of the manual is written from the perspective of Hank, the guy who runs the bait shop that you'll be buying your gear from. And it's actually pretty well written, with a lot of detail about the various fishermen and women that you can choose, and descriptions of how to use each of the lures. Most of this information is repeated in the game, so the manual isn't as needed as it might be in other titles, especially because critical information like what some of the meters in the display mean, or how to read the various depth finders isn't included, which is unfortunate because I would have gladly traded some of these blurry grayscale pictures for some more in-depth instructions. Oh well, they, they can't all be winners, I guess. We'll just have to try to brute force this one, which is not a phrase that I ever thought I would associate with fishing. I mentioned Far Cry 5 in the intro, and seeing as how I'm playing through it at the moment, I think it's as good a reference point as anything when it comes to fishing. If you're not familiar with the title, the game takes place in a fictionalized version of Montana. And just like most of the rest of the games in the Far Cry series, it's you up against hordes of bad guys in an open world environment, allowing you to choose how you want to attack the problem, so to speak. Part of that requires money for various guns, ammunition, and other various sundries, and being in Montana, what better way to earn money for those purposes than to hunt and fish? The fishing aspect of the game works really well, and while you can use multiple different rods and lures, if all you really want to do is just catch some regular fish, it's as simple as casting a line and then reeling the fish while working to tire it out, with you just having to be careful not to put too much stress on the line, which will cause you to lose your fish. The whole process of figuring out the basics of how fishing in the game works only takes about five minutes, and due to its simplicity, it's easy to fish for a bit, go shoot some bad guys or find some collectibles, and then come back to fishing whenever you want, without having to relearn the whole process. On the whole, it's a nice relaxing minigame that just adds to the Far Cry 5 experience without taking anything away from it. Unfortunately, this isn't a review of the fishing minigame in Far Cry 5. 
it's a review of Bassmaster's Classic. The reason why I mention all this is to set up my main issue with Bassmaster's Classic, and that is the fact that it takes something that should be a fun virtual day on the lake, and instead is a frustrating and incomprehensible piece of software that I have a hard time believing anyone actually play tested, simply due to the fact that any kind of success while playing the game appears to be the result of pure dumb luck. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start out by talking about the overall design of the game, which to be fair, appears to have a lot of good ideas of things to include in a fishing game. When you first boot things up, you're given a display of what the rules are for the tournament, and then you're given a choice of which fisherman or woman you want to play as. There's no real life anglers presented in the game, which makes that decision to add that memorial to Brian in the manual slightly odd. And instead, you just have nine colorful characters to select from, each with a unique biography that supposedly lays out what the strengths are for that particular character. And then a custom head, which is displayed during gameplay to remind you of which person you chose. I like this idea a lot in theory. Fishing, just like any other sport, is going to have competitors that have wildly different skill sets. Some are going to be more accurate at tossing a line, some are going to be stronger and have an easier time reeling in fish. And some will have better touch on getting a fish on the line, and be better skilled at keeping them on that line so that they don't escape before you reel them in. Unfortunately, at least as far as I could see in the game, none of that mattered. It's entirely possible that behind the scenes in the game's programming that there are some custom attributes for each character that perhaps do make them better suited to performing those tasks, but during my time playing it, I chose four or five of the different characters, and none of them really seem to be any better or worse than each other. So, even if this is included in the game's programming, it doesn't appear to be implemented well. Once you've chosen a character, it's time to get into the game proper. If you've played either of the TNN bass fishing games on the Genesis, or watched my reviews for those games, Certain elements from those games are going to seem very familiar, the first of which is how the bait shop concept is presented, which should be your next stop before hitting the lake. At its core, fishing is a simple concept. You need a rod, reel, some fishing line, and a lure, and then perhaps a boat if you're actually going to be on the lake instead of just fishing from a dock or the coastline. But which lures should you be choosing? What kind of line do you need? What about a fish finder, so that you actually know where to try tossing a line? Well, all of these things are included in the game, complete with real branded versions of those items, to the point where when starting up a game, you're presented with a billboard that has advertisements for some of the companies whose products are available in the game for purchase. And then, some not used in the game. For instance, the clothing manufacturer Wrangler and Chevy Trucks. I can only assume that they were advertisers for the Bassmasters Classic at the time, which is why their advertising was listed in-game with companies like Lowrance, Johnson, and Evinrude. To the game's credit, the advertising isn't too obtrusive, and it does add a nice feeling of realism to the game, to make it seem like that you are out there competing with the other fishermen and women. Once you've chosen the items, that you can afford anyway, as you only start out with $100 to your name until you win some prize money, it's time to start the first of four tournaments that make up the Bassmaster Classic in-game. Each tournament consists of three days on one of four lakes that run from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., essentially giving you eight hours each day to try to catch the five largest bass you possibly can. Yes, not pikes, carps, salmon, or any other fish. You are only interested in bass, no matter what you actually catch, as anything besides a bass will be thrown back. It is the Bassmasters Classic, after all, not the Catfish Noodle-Rama. However, this brings up an interesting design choice. When you cast your line into the water, you're presented with a view from the side of the lure, in the water, under the surface. This view shows the fish that are swimming around, if you're lucky enough to cast into a place where there actually are fish swimming around, more on that in a bit. And you can then try to position your lure and activate it to try to get a bite. The thing is, the fish look different, i.e. a pike looks like a pike, not a bass. So a smart player would never even try to catch a pike, since it's just a waste of your time, and based on the amount of time given per day, 
you need to really concentrate on catching a bass every 90 minutes or so to hit your limit. The problem is, this isn't terribly realistic, and if you're on the boat, you're not going to have any kind of clue what type of fish is biting. So making it to where you can cheat and have some sort of x-ray vision into the water is a little bit strange. I understand what their thinking was and that it would look boring to have all of the fish look identical, but I don't think this was the answer. Perhaps instead they should have had a few different generic looking fish, and then once you brought the fish into the boat, it would reveal what you had actually caught. This, however, leads into my largest issue with the game, which unfortunately to me was more or less game breaking, and that's how difficult it actually is to catch a single fish, much less five fish, much less five fish of the correct type. Once you set sail onto the lake, you're armed with a fish finder, which is a sonar type device that is supposed to tell you where to find fish, and also shows the depth of the lake at that particular point. Unfortunately, it's not explained anywhere how the fish finder actually works. You're presented with a screen that, if you're near fish, does show fish on the screen, that's easy enough. However, how do you square where the fish are on the screen on the fish finder versus where they are in the lake? Is the fish finder supposed to be showing you what's directly in front of you? To the side of you? And if so, how do you determine just how far those fish are away from the boat? indicating how far you need to cast your line. None of this is spelled out anywhere, and at best, you end up just guessing where to try to fish, which then leads to no fish being found more often than not. There's apparently a more expensive fish finder that you can buy, and perhaps it works better or is easier to understand. However, you'd have to win the first weekend of competition to be able to afford upgrading to it, leading to a chicken and the egg type problem where you need better equipment to win, but need to win to afford better equipment. If you happen to be lucky enough to find any fish in the water where you cast, and if any of those fish happen to be bass and not the other types of fish, you're then left with the problem of trying to actually catch those fish. And for the life of me, this was something that took forever to figure out, until I read through the manual a third time and barely found a brief mention in the rods section that stated you have to press down on the d-pad once the fish bite to actually get them on the hook and start to try to reel them in. This is the only place this is mentioned and it's not in the quick reference section that explains what all of the buttons do. So that's a clear miss on their part and if you didn't have the manual, I mean good luck figuring that one out on your own. Once you figure out how to actually get the fish on the hook and start to try to fight to reel them in, this portion again isn't explained well. There's two meters in the middle of the screen, with the one on the top appearing to be the fish's stamina, and then the one on the bottom appearing to be your stamina, with bars that go back and forth. And nowhere is it explained what these bars mean, or the circles that are to the left of each of the bars. I'm guessing they have something to do with how tired each is, but that's all that it is, is a guess, because unlike the brief mention of how to hook the fish, these indicators aren't discussed at all anywhere. Through some trial and error, I eventually figured out how to reel in fish, although I'm sure I was still perhaps missing something or not doing it completely correctly, because the effort to catch a fish seemed to take at least five minutes of fighting with it. After you do catch one, it'll tell you how big it is and what type of fish it is, which is kind of nice and feels like an accomplishment, until you have to throw it back because it's not a bass. I played the game for approximately three hours over a few different sessions, and while some of that time was admittedly lost due to not knowing that I had to hit down on the d-pad to properly hook the fish, I still ended up catching zero bass over that three hours. Between attempting the practice pond in Skull Lake, where the first tournament is held, I caught about 10 fish over that three hours, mostly pike, but also some trout, but a grand total of zero bass. Now, I'm all for a game offering a challenge, and I certainly expect for there to be a learning curve, but the fact that the main point of the game is to catch bass, and I played the game for three hours and caught zero bass during that time, seems like a little bit of a problem to me. Perhaps someone that really enjoys fishing might be okay with this slow roll into the game, 
but with the inherent time limit in the game around catching the fish, I've got serious concerns about anyone actually being able to catch enough bass to compete with the other computer competitors in the tournament. The graphics in the game are decent, I suppose, and somewhat on a comparable level with the TNN fishing titles, probably landing somewhere in between the two. For a game that came out in mid-1995, they're certainly not impressive for 16-bit standards at the time, but the fish do look decently drawn, and as mentioned, the different types of fish are drawn differently. The overhead view of the boat and the lake is zoomed in closer than in the TNN titles, providing more detail than in those games, which is nice, but it also seemed to be zoomed in maybe a bit too far. And as much as the additional detail is nice, I think I would have preferred being able to see a bit more of the lake, just to make it easier to know where you are and navigate around. I will say I do like the style of how the various characters are drawn in the selection screen and then the bait shot portion of the game, as it gives the game a unique look, but I don't think that even in those areas anyone would specifically say that the game has good graphics. The game's sound isn't anything particular to be excited about either. There's some jaunty music that plays in both the bait shop while you're making your selections, and then a different tune while you're puttering around the lake in your boat, and they both fit the game well, but neither is anything anyone would choose to listen to. I did like the music that plays when you start to fight with reeling in a fish. It's intense and a good change of pace from the other music in the game. The sound effects on the other hand are minimal and mainly consist of your boat's engine and then some white noise as your lure bobs around in the lake before hooking a fish. For both the graphics and sound, I think I'd land on saying they're both fine, but neither are anything special. And again, for a game that was released after the beginning of the 32-bit era, I'm not seeing or hearing anything here that couldn't have been programmed into a game years before 1995. Perhaps it's not fair to Bassmaster's Classic to compare the game to something included in a modern title, but I can't get over the fact of how easy it is to play the fishing minigame in Far Cry 5, and how difficult and cumbersome it is to play Bassmaster's Classic. Age notwithstanding, you would think that a game that is dedicated to only fishing would provide a better experience than a throwaway side quest from a first-person shooter. And unfortunately, I honestly think that there is the basis of a good game here, with the various bait shop options, the idea behind having the bait be interactive rather than just having it sit there, the different characters, the hidden side mission to catch a legendary monster fish in one of the lakes during the tournament, it's all clear that there was some thought put into the game. However, good intentions don't necessarily make for a good game, and the execution here is just sorely lacking. As a result, I'm giving Bassmaster's Classic one star, as while I do think it's better than the completely broken second TNN fishing game, it's not as good as the first one, and in 2024, there's just no reason to play this. Okay, and that's Bassmaster's Classic. I was really hoping that by getting away from that TNN license that perhaps the Bassmaster series would be able to deliver a more fun fishing experience, but ultimately it was just a frustrating waste of time. I can honestly say that I had much more fun with last week's game, the unlicensed shooter Earth Defense, and if you'd asked me before I reviewed either title which I'd end up preferring, I don't know that I would have said that, just due to the fact that Realtek didn't exactly have the best reputation with their other unlicensed titles. Although I suppose when you look at it that way, technically Black Pearl Software was a subsidiary of THQ, and THQ didn't exactly have a great track record with their games at the time either. Next time on Zalagamoto, everyone get ready to cheer because it is not a sports title. Yeah, really. Somewhere, my YouTube metrics are breathing a sigh of relief. However, even though it's not a sports title, it's a game that I've got to be honest, I do not have high hopes for, as it's the console sequel to what was formerly a classic arcade game. And sometimes when you have those derivative games where the publisher is clearly just trying to milk an existing license, the results are not going to be anything to write home about at best. But don't worry, regardless of the game's quality, you can rely on Zalagamoto to deliver these results directly to your door, and hopefully not through your window. Well, that's it for Zalagamoto episode 231. If you liked what you saw here and want to see more, please think about liking and subscribing if you are so inclined, as it will help more people see these videos. 
But most importantly, whatever you like to play, have fun and be excellent to each other. Later.